I did a video a while back. It was a chip of the day for an IRF350, and it's called a HexFET. And there were some questions about why is it called a HexFET? That's a good question. Um, so in um, building an FET, uh, they're generally on a piece of silicon, and you have uh, depositions on the, uh, doping on the on the device that makes P and N junctions and stuff. And you have sources and drain, drains and gates. The gate keeps it from going side to side. It acts as, as, as the gatekeeper, right? And so uh, here, all of the charge, all of the currents flow laterally. They flow from side to side. They only go horizontally, okay? Nothing goes vertically. Everything goes horizontally. But as you build higher and higher currents and more and more power into these devices, you kind of run out of steam and you need to have a trick to get more and more current through these devices. And so uh, one of the first ones was a VMOS and it created this V structure. And what you did was you, you redirected these currents vertically instead of horizontally. And you went through the, through the, um, the silicon and you could pass a lot more current that way. You could also do what's on the right-hand side here, which is kind of a rectangular structure. But imagine looking straight down on this thing, you know, from a, a high viewpoint straight down. That might be a cross-section of a hexagon. You don't know if it's a hexagon or a parallelogram or a square. You don't know. It might be a circle. You don't know if you have this top view, right? So the hex vets are indeed hexagonal structures that allow you to have the currents go vertical. And uh, you could probably make one in a waffle pattern, but the waffles would be rectangular and uh, the silicon is a cubic crystal and it likes to break along straight lines. And so it, you might, a, a waffle pattern might add too much stress and you would have breakage and stuff. So the hexagonal pattern is a little more robust and allows you to separate things nicely. So, uh, supposedly, um, it's sort of like having a whole bunch of parallel FETs, uh, where they're kind of all evenly matched and you don't need to worry about any, uh, any, um, they call it emitter ballast resistance here it would be source balance, uh, source ballast resistance, but you get the idea so you're having vertical current instead of horizontal current. So let's take the part that I was using, which was the, uh, IRF 350. And let's, uh, let's see if we can look inside and see little hexagons. So when you open the top up, you see a die and uh, the um, gate and the source are wire bonded. And then the drain is the case. Um, if, we, if we look in even closer, here's one of the wire bonds coming out and goes over to the chip. Here we are even closer, that same wire bond on going onto the chip. Starting to see a little bit of maybe a roughness to that, uh, that piece of silicon. It's not smooth and shiny like a lot of silicon is. But it's a little bit, a little bit rough. And if we go in even further, we start to see that, yeah, that roughness is like a little like a toilet paper. It's like, like it's got quilting, right? These little divots looks like a whole bunch of like maybe little circles or something. And if we go even go in even deeper, we start to see that, yeah, indeed, those little things kind of look like hexagons, teeny, teeny, tiny hexagons. And if you go in even closer, you start to see the three dimensional structure of these things. They're kind of like little divots almost like a golf ball, right? You got these little hexagonal divots all over the, all over the silicon. Yep. They be tiny, little, tiny, tiny little divots. All right. I think that explains what a hex fit is and, um, yep, they're in there. <laughs>